Hey everybody, it is John the Comic Guy, and I think we could all agree, comic books rock. But what else rocks? Do you have any other hobbies that you're really, really deep into? I happen to also be very deep into music and audio and records in particular. In fact, records were what caused me to quit collecting comics back in 1978 for the very first time. It was Kiss, Destroyer, and Yes, Fragile. Uh, and, and after that, I realized I got to spend all my money on, uh, on records. But obviously, I am back heavy into comics. But today, let's talk about some of the parallels in the art. So uh, I, I think the first to start out with is going to be probably the most obvious to you guys. Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. That is a great cover, and it's a cover from one of my favorite artists of all time, Richard Corbin. Um, you could even see his name uh, down below. So I always love this art. So it, it, for me, this was this whole package is a work of art. The music, in my opinion, is fun. It's great. I remember listening to it nonstop, um, and the art is great. So as you, if if any of you are also record enthusiasts, audiophiles, audio enthusiasts, you'll know not all records have good covers. Sometimes they are boring as heck, but <laughs> this cover. Is exceptional. Also notice another parallel with records is has a protective sleeve. So records, uh, you know, they offer collectors really nice uh, 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 protective sleeves. I think this is actually even a four mil. It's not mylar, but it's not that polypropylene that messes with the cover. So it's really high quality. And the inner sleeve is actually anti-static too that I get. So um, great book. But now Let's play a little game, shall we? I'm going to show you a comic book with the cover artist that did an album cover, and then I'm going to show you the album cover. So the first, one, another one of my favorites, my lifelong favorite, Bernie Wrightson. He draws monsters horror so well. It, it, it just it blows me away. Then I find out about three months ago that he drew a Spider-Man comic book called Hookie. At that point, I had to pick it up, and, and you know, fortunately, I think they had an oversized uh, version and then a comic book version. Because of my OCD, I just preferred to get the comic book size version, so I got it, and I got this book pretty cheap. But uh, Bernie Wrightson, as you can see front and back, he maintains his skill of drawing horror really well. So, and again, this is in my top loader and label, so really, really good stuff. Bernie Wrightson. Amazing stuff. Now, let's see an album cover he did. Again, pretty tight, uh, pretty tightly related to the first record. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Bernie Wrightson cover. And how badass is that? Meatloaf. This was an album that followed up to Bad Out of Hell. It's called Dead Ringer. Um, it's okay. The album's okay. But if anything, I'm keeping it because of this cover. Look at that Bernie Wrightson art, for God's sakes. The dude is amazing. So again, really, really amazing work from Bernie Wrightson. Meatloaf, Dead Ringer. Again, the album from a one to a 10, I would say I give it a good four. But that cover art, that warrants me keeping it. That's a 10, I love that. Bernie, well done. Okay, the next, the next cover artist, in a comic book, once again, is Richard Corbin. Now, the reason I wanted to show this book is this is one of the lesser known titles uh, that Marvel put out, and they had, <coughs> pardon me, they had Richard Corbin draw it. It's a Hulk title called Banner. I, I The art is pretty cool, so again, I have to keep it just because I'm a big Richard Corbin fan, and I love the texture of the, the way he makes the skin look. It just it looks so cool. So he drew Banner. So now, what other album cover did, did Richard Corbin draw? Anybody have a guess? It's not a far stretch. It's not a far stretch from the first two we saw. Jim Steinman. So Jim Steinman had a solo uh, endeavor. I think for a period of time, he and Meatloaf uh, parted ways. And um, I, I don't know a lot of the history behind that, despite the fact that I saw the documentary about two years ago. But, but nevertheless, at the time, they, they were recording separately. And Jim had Richard Corman's art for his cover. And again,
again, when we were talking about the skin, the textures, Richard Corbin is just such a master at it. I love it. So again, this album is only okay to me. In fact, it came with a 45 with the 33 RPM record. So the 45 actually had a song on it that out of this whole album was really the only song I liked. So, hey, what are you going to do? Opinions, it's this subjective. But I, could th I think all of us as comic fans could agree this is a rocking cover. Wow, I love it. So again, Richard Corbin gets credit for another amazing work of art. The next, the next comic, John Byrne. So I'm actually going to say let's uh, let's give two thumbs up on this. It, as you notice, it has a Stanley signature. Um, I have always been uh, a Bullseye fan. In fact. An episode in the future, I, I, I want to talk about some of my favorite story arcs and see if you've read them and see what you think of these story arcs. One of those story arcs involves Bullseye. Uh, he is a crazy villain. But So, okay, John Byrne is the artist of this. Let's see. What album cover did John Byrne draw? In fact, this is from a, um, a, a series that I don't own. I just read that. It was from a panel in that series that he drew. Um, yeah. Joe Satriani, Surfing with the Alien. This is one of the records, well, the CD version of it. When I was buying Serwin Vegas speakers, as a matter of fact, at the end of this, I think I'm going to show you my, uh, my listening areas. Just... Uh, I think a couple of you were already made comments that you thought uh, um, the music area was interesting. So I'm going to share it with you, and I'll, I'll just tag the video on the end of this. But look at that. Joe Satriani. Well, I took his CD, and I was using this as a test CD to test out speakers. And, and Sorwin Vegas speakers were, were unbelievable. And I'm telling you, when we cranked it, people were holding the ears. It was probably even causing me ear damage. It was probably not the smartest thing in the world but anyway guys I digress Joe Satriani surfing with the alien this is a wow cover this is a, a wow piece of art from John Byrne in fact I don't even believe they use this image as the cover for this album anymore um, I don't know if it was for legalities I don't I don't know but it's the same color scheme but I think it's like the, uh, the head of his guitar instead of having uh, the silver surfer on there but this is a great when I saw this I had to pick it up just for my uh, um, just for my comic collecting addiction but the album is phenomenal Joe Satriani, Joe Satriani surfing with the alien okay now the last two albums I'll show one at a time but I don't have a comic book equivalent but I would ask the crew that you sound off in the comments if you know who the artist is the first one I don't know it it happens to be that the last two albums I'm going to show are both bootlegs, so they're unofficial releases. This one, according to the internet, is one of the most popular bootlegs from this band. Probably not going to be surprised because I think they openly allowed people to record them. I don't think they're crazy about the bootlegging, but they're openly, they openly allowed people to record them. Grateful Dead. So I'm going to try to make this kind of close up. Look at that art. God, look at it. It's creepy and it's cool and it's beautiful. It's, I would think whoever this artist was, they should have drawn Warren magazine covers. They, that, that, you tell me this wouldn't be great on a cover of Creepy or Eerie? Wow. Even Vampirella. Just look at that art. Even the back cover is wicked. Look at that. The eyes, the faces, but I love it. It, 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 it almost has a Richard Corbin-esque feel to it because it has that texture, the skin. I love it. If this was only colored, I, imagine how great it would be. But you know, you know how bootleg albums were. They, you know, they they were just out to, to send it out and they're not really looking so much at the quality, but but this is a double album and it looks great. I love that cover. So if anybody is aware of who this artist is, I would like to know who it is because I would I would try to seek out some of his comic books because that this person is talented. Wow. 
Okay, as we wind down, my last record that I'm going to show you today. This is from William Stout. William Stout did this cover. I do not have any Tales of the Crypt or, 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 or uh, rec uh, <laughs> I could speak, right? I don't have any comics from them anymore. I must have sold them all off. But this is a bootleg album from The Who, if it's not totally obvious. So The Who came out, or, or, or some, they, these bootleggers came out with this Who bootleg record. According to the internet, there was only 120 of these that actually exist. And the reason was the FBI clamped down, raided the place, took all the recordings, took all the equipment. What is really cool about this is it has um, pressed colored vinyl. In fact, I'm going to show it. But again, William Stout, that is just so cool, right? But I'm going to show you. Look at this. Oh, oh, okay, these are the records. These are the anti-static, but look at that. You know, the albums have colored press vinyl. I just find that so amazing. So, you know how I, uh, I, I, I always uh, uh, talk about the, the parallels? How nice of a parallel is that is, you know, comics have first printing, second printing, sometimes they change the, co the, the covers. Then you have albums, right, protected with nice protective plastic. The covers are great, and they have different pressings. So while comics have different printings, records have different pressings. Um, is that trivia for you? And I love these pressings, colored vinyl. Anyway, everybody, thank you for indulging me on this. If you like this content, let me know. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly do a quick run and show you my listening areas. I have, I have a couple of listening areas, including one in my, my garage. But the main one is in my master bedroom. The, the, the secondary one is in my basement. So I'm going to show you the, them both. I'll take you on a quick little tour and, and see what you think of my sound system. If you guys are also audiophiles or music aficionados, I don't care if you like records, tapes, open reels, which I also love, let me know. Sound off. Let's let's kind of make this a bonding experience because as you can tell, I get really amped up about music. I think it's just so cool. As well as comic books. So everybody, you are awesome. If you like this content, please hit subscribe. And now, if you don't mind, I'm going to take you for a, a, a tour of my uh, audio listening areas. Thank you so much. Uh, if you know people who are into audio, uh, send them on to this, as, uh, this video as well. Thank you much, and I'll talk to you soon. And guys, I am super excited to announce that Comic Skin is now sponsoring us, and Mark out at Comic Skin is giving 5% off to anybody who subscribes to this channel and puts John the Comic Guy 5 in the coupon code area out at checkout. This is going to be good for any single, 5 pack, or 10 packs of the self slabs. As everybody knows, I've mentioned it many times, these uh, Comic Skins are my favorite way to personally at home preserving your favorite comics without having to mail them out to a grading company. Check out comicskin.com and get your 5% discount. Here we are in my secondary listening area in my basement. As you can see here in the basement, I don't mind displaying the equipment. As you see, when we go to the bedroom, I obviously don't like it out in the open like that, but um, those red surround woofers are my Serwin Vegas speakers. Unbelievable bass response. Um, cassettes, eight tracks, CDs here, um, just like uh, <laughs> just like comic books. I, I have so many. Um, I, I clearly have problems, hoarding problems. Uh, sometimes you have to ask yourself, how many copies of Abbey Road do I really need, especially if some of them are sealed? It's, it's ridiculous. But again, I love records. They were a passion of mine. I have some, you know, top and bottom. As you see in my master bed, uh, uh, I have my most listened to records, CDs, cassettes. So again, I, here I keep the stuff that I listen to uh, more frequently. And, um, you know, I also have mini disc players, I'll show you. I, I don't know if you guys have ever listened or owned a mini disc, but they were more popular out in Japan and Europe, but I think they sound fantastic. A lot of people will say CDs sound better, but for me, there is really nothing that sounds really good like a mini disc. I, I thoroughly enjoy them. So uh, you'll see as I pan across, I have another pair of Serum Vegas speakers. I have a bunch of uh, um, stereo equipment. There are my mini disc players, two mini disc players above the cassette, two dual CD players. Um, they're, they're on either side of my uh, 
my fireplace for ambience. Um, you're going to see as we, uh, after you see the fireplace, I have um, my MK2 Technics turntable. I have uh, eight track players, cassette players. That's a monster power electrical cleaner. It just makes this stuff sound great. So, hey guys, sound off. Thank you so much for letting me share. Sound off if you like this content. If you want to see more of it, please let me know and hit the subscribe button. I uh, really enjoy showing you this stuff. If you have comments and thoughts about future content, please let me know and I will talk to you soon.